Hi, welcome to Donegal Railway Heritage Centre. Now back in the early 90s when the society here was first being set up, a video was produced to let people know what we're doing here and our plans for the future. On that video was footage of the County Donegal Railways, the Londonderry Lossowilly Railways, Cavan and Leacham Railways, West Clare and the Tralee and Dingle. So the first clip we're going to look at is off the County Donegal Railway. This video was made available to us by Keith Christie. J.H. Roberts' video was made available by Martin Jenkins. And we also have some of Tim Shuttlesworth's footage on there as well. The stills were supplied by Keith Christie and it was narrated and produced by Tom Ferris. The County Donegal Railway operated Ireland's largest narrow gauge network, which had at its peak a route mileage of 124. Like the Londonderry in Luxwilly, it had its origins in a broad gauge branch. This ran from Straban to Stranorra and was converted to the three foot gauge in 1892. The independent Donegal Railway was taken over in 1906 by the English Midland Railway and the Great Northern Railway of Ireland. The Midlands interest passed to the LMS at the grouping of Britain's railways in the early 1920s. The Donegal served Letterkenny, Straban, Derry, Stranorlar, Glenties, Donegal Town, Killybegs and Ballyshannon. Three classes of steam locomotives survived into the 1950s. The Class 4 Baltic or 464 tanks dated from 1904. The Class 5 264 tanks were built in 1907 and 1908. An improved version of this class, consisting of three engines, was introduced in 1912. These three Class 5A locomotives were the last new steam locomotives delivered to the CDR. The Donegal was a pioneer of the use of diesel rail cars on passenger services. We shall see a variety of these distinctive vehicles on our programme ranging from number 10 dating from 1932 seen here to later developments on the basic design which had a power bogey and an engine unit articulated from the passenger saloon. We begin our films at Ballyshannon on the southern tip of County Donegal on the 30th of May 1957 where Tim Shuttleworth recorded real car number 15, shunting prior to forming a service to Donegal Town. Number 15 was built in 1936 and could seat 41 passengers. When Keith Christie visited Ballyshannon in September 1957, wheelcar number 18 was on duty. Built in 1940 with seats for 43 passengers and powered like the other Donegal railcar seen in this programme by a Gardner diesel engine, number 18 has recently been restored to full working order and can be seen at the Foyle Valley Railway Museum, built on the site of the old G&R terminus at Foyle Road in Derry. The railcar sound effects in this programme represent the authentic voice of number 18, recently recorded at the museum through the courtesy of the Amenities Department of Derry City Council. Railcar number 10, seen here at Killy Beggs, was the first of the diesel articulated railcars to run in Ireland. Supplied to the Clogher Valley Railway in 1932 by Walkers of Wigan and bought by the CDR on the closure of that line in 1941, this historic vehicle has also been preserved and is to be found in the splendid new railway gallery of the Ulster Folk and Transport Museum at Coltraw in County Down. Number 10 was the smallest of the CDR railcars, seating 28 passengers. When Tim Shuttleworth visited Killy Beggs in May 1957, railcar number 16 was on duty and had just been turned. The CDR had a policy of waste not, want not. The turntable at Killy Beggs was constructed from the frames of the Class 5 264 tank, number 19 Letterkenny, which was withdrawn in 1940. The CDR rail cars were powerful enough to haul a coach and a few vans when the need arose. 
This extended their limited capacity and made for greater operating flexibility. The vans painted in red livery were lighter than normal goods wagons and were designed to be used in conjunction with the rail cars. The next part of our programme was filmed by Keith Christie on his visits to Ireland in 1957 and 1958. Inver was roughly halfway between Killybegs and Donegal Town. Railcar number 16 approaches the station on a service from Donegal, hauling a van and one of the trailers designed for use with the railcars. Inver did not possess a passing route, but trains could be crossed by running the eastbound service into the goods siding and then reversing it up to the platform when the westbound train had arrived. Real car number 19 arrives from Killy Beggs. This vehicle, built in 1950, and her sister, number 20, which came the following year, were the ultimate developments of the Walker rail cars for the CDR. As we will see later in the programme, rail cars similar to these were ordered by CIE for the West Clare Railway. Numbers 19 and 20 still happily survive, having been bought by the Isle of Man Railway on the closure of the Donegal system in 1959. Trains back to back at Inver prepare to leave for Killybegs and Donegal Town, the latter being our next destination. Lines from Ballyshannon, Killybegs and Stranorla converged on Donegal Town. A rail car not on service approaches from the Stranorla direction. The main operating drawback of the Walker rail cars was that they could only be driven from one end and thus had to be turned at each terminus. They could not be operated in multiple. If two rail cars were used together, each had to have a driver. There were no sophisticated refuelling facilities on the County Donegal. Drivers invariably carried a few cans of diesel around in the cabs of their rail cars. Real car number 10 arrives at Donegal Town from Stranorla, forming a through service to Killybegs. On August the 11th, 1958, passengers board real car number 14, built in 1935, at a cost of £2,229. Number 14 had seats for 41 passengers. The green wicker post office cart was once a common sight in the Irish Republic. We head north from Donegal Town to Stranorla, enjoying the spectacular scenery of Barnsmore Gap from the bumpy perspective of real car number 10. A rail car, a coach and a red van arrive at Stranorla from Donegal Town. The abutments of the bridge which carried the Glenties branch which closed completely in 1952 over the River Finn can be seen in the foreground. Two rail cars with number 20 in the lead arrive at Stranorla with a train from Straban on August 9, 1958. We catch our first sight of Donegal steam at Stranorla. Number 11 Iron, the last survivor of a class of four 464s built by Naismith Wilson in 1904, leaves Stranorla with the goods for Straban. Crossing as it did the international border between Northern Ireland and the Irish Republic, Donegal trains were subject to an examination by customs and excise officials. Here at Castle Finn, Passengers who have detrained from a railcar from Straban and their luggage are examined by Irish customs men. 
before continuing their journey to Stranorra and beyond. Number 11 urn waits in the siding for the customs formalities concerning its goods train to be completed. Passengers' luggage is reloaded into the van behind real car 15. And after the tiresome and tedious delay, which was an everyday fact of life on the CDR, the onward journey is resumed. Later in the day, one of the 264 tanks shunts goods wagons for the benefit of the customs men at Castle Finn. We move on to Straban, where the CDR met the broad gauge Great Northern Line from Derry to Belfast and Dublin. Here we encounter the Donegal's only diesel locomotive, number 11 Phoenix, built in 1933 as a steam tractor by Atkinson Walker of Preston for the Clogher Valley Railway. As built it was underpowered and virtually useless. On the Donegal it was equipped with a Gardner diesel engine similar to those used in the rail cars and gave many years of useful service shunting at Straban. 264 tank number 4 Mean Glass arrives with a goods train from Stranorra. Whilst Phoenix waits to dispose of the wagons which the steam locomotive has brought in. As Class 5A number 2 Blanche waits for the off with the goods to Letterkenny, on the adjacent GNR broad gauge line, a 06 knot and a 440 head a train of failed rail cars in the direction of Oma. Rail cars 12 and 10 arrive at Straban with the tail of coaches and vans in tow from Stranorra. The third coach is one of a set built by the LMS NCC in Belfast in 1928 for the boat trains between Ballymena and Larne on the long closed three foot gauge system in County Antrim. At last, Blanche gets underway with the Letterkenny goods. The CDR had a sensible attitude to its steam locomotives. Whilst rail cars dominated the normal passenger service, steam locomotives were kept in good order for goods traffic and excursion trains. County Donegal wagons had continuous brakes. The brake coach at the end of the train was not ballasted like a conventional brake van. It was provided to accommodate the guard. The Straban to Letterkenny line was opened as late as the 1st of January 1909. It was the last part of the Donegal's network of lines to be built and was largely funded by the system's joint owners, the Midland and the Great Northern. 264 tank number 6, column kill shunts at Letterkenny. On the 9th of August 1958, Blanche brings the daily goods from Letterkenny to Straban into Rafaux station. Some difficulty is encountered by the railwaymen as they struggle with the Jacob's Biscuits container. Later in the day, number 4 Mean Glass arrives at Rafaux hauling a rail car which then continued to Letterkenny under its own power. Meanglass was in a test run following some repairs. The loco coupled up to rail car number 16, which it then hauled back to Straban. As Meanglass moves off to the shed, 
Two of the CDR's remaining trio of Class 5 264 tanks are seen together. The three engines which survived under the closure of the system, numbers 4, 5 and 6, mean glass, Drumbo and column kill, have all been preserved. The remainder of our County Donegal footage was shot in the mid-1950s by the late J. H. Roberts. His films begin on the Letter Kenny line at Rafaux. Rail cars cross at Lifford, just over the border from Straban, which is our next port of call. The impressive station name board from Straban can still be seen in the new railway gallery at the Cultural Museum. It was almost impossible to visit Straban without seeing Phoenix shuffling around the yard on its shunting duties. The redoubtable Henry Forbes, manager of the CDR in the 1930s, who had Phoenix reconstituted as a diesel, is supposed to have sold her old boiler to a laundry. The 264 tank at number 5 Drumbo is about to depart from Straban with her goods to Stranora. When J. H. Roberts visited Derry in the mid-1950s, he recorded UTA buses on city services and on the Craigavon Bridge over the River Foyle. But by this time the CDR branch from Straban to Derry had already closed and the tracks to the Norwegian terminus at Victoria Road had been lifted. After a gap of nearly 40 years, CDR stock again runs in Derry at the new museum opposite the site of the old terminus. Back at Straban we glimpse the 264 tank and GNR rail cars in their blue and cream livery before heading off up the Finn Valley on the three foot gauge. We stop at Castle Finn for customs examination. And head on to Stranorler in the ubiquitous rail car number 10. Number 10 terminates at the impressive Stranorler station. In the bay is rail car number 12, the first Walker diesel supplied to the CDR, which arrived in 1934. To the end, the CTR maintained a sizable fleet of carriages which were hauled by steam locomotives when special trains or excursions were called for. In a siding is rail car trailer number three, which began life as a dreary petrol engine rail car on the Dublin and Blessington steam tramway before being bought and regaged by the CTR in 1934. Number 12 moves out of the bay as number 10 shuffles a red van around the station. We will travel on number 12 along perhaps the most scenic part of the Donegal system, from Stranorla to Donegal Town, through Barnsmore Gap. We pause at Derg Bridge Halt. Things are stirring in the hills of Donegal. This is the section of the CDR that the South Donegal Railway Restoration Society is planning to rebuild. The spirit of the CDR, which has slumbered since 1959, will soon be revived in this wonderful setting. The rail car pauses at Loch Esk, which will be the terminus of the new line. The original West Donegal Railway terminated here for seven years in the 1880s until funds could be found to extend the line to Donegal Town. The station buildings at Donegal Town are still in existence although the tracks and the rail cars and their trailers have long departed. 
The appearance of the town itself has not greatly changed since the 1950s. Though it is a good deal harder to find a parking place today than it was then. Back at the station, some boys indulge in the illegal gambling game of pitch and toss, oblivious to the arrival of Real Car 18 from Ballyshannon. Work goes on in the goods yard as Real Car number 20 arrives from Killy Beggs, which is our final destination on the County Donegal. Passengers alight at Duncanilly, one of the intermediate stations on the branch. As we approach Killybegs, we see an Irish Navy fisheries protection vessel moored in the bay. This is one of the three flower class corvettes bought from the Royal Navy after World War II. Fish from Killybegs was an important source of traffic for the railway, but ominously a lorry is at the quayside. And so we take our leave of the County Donegal. Hope you enjoyed looking at that archive footage of the trains that we once had in this county. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.